With 2020 finally behind us, what do you need to do before tax day, April 15th? That's our investor question. Welcome to YCG, where we help your capital grow so you can achieve your financial goals. If that's something that interests you, then hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss a thing. I'm Will Kruger, Chief Executive Officer here at YCG. Having welcomed in 2021, it's time to start closing our books and filing our tax return from last year's financial activities. This year, tax day is April 15th, 2021. We're going to share five things you should think about doing before filing your taxes, but as always, do check with your financial or tax advisor as each individual's circumstances are unique. You're gonna to wanna to stick around because we're going to share an effective way to possibly lower your tax bill even though 2020 is over. It's still not too late to proactively manage your finances, and our fifth point will tell you how to do this. All right, let's get into it. Point number one, gather your documents. Locate and review your previous year's return. This will be a good reminder of what information is needed. Also, make sure you have your social security numbers for you, your spouse, and your dependents. Employers must issue your W-2 by January 31st, so keep an eye out for that coming in your mailbox, either physical or electronic. You'll want to gather all of your 1099 statements as well. These are typically issued around the last week of January through the first couple of weeks in February. Each of these will end in a different suffix depending on the type of payment you received. Form 1099-MISC or miscellaneous is for contract work. Investment earnings show up on your 1099-INT or for interest. 1099-DIV for dividends and 1099-B for broker handled transactions. Make sure you gather information showing how much you paid in interest for your student loans, mortgage payments, etc. And gather receipts and summary statements for all of your charitable giving as well. Organizing and gathering all of these documents will help you and or your accountant tremendously in preparing your return with a little less stress and should also decrease the chance of misstatements and making mistakes on your filing. Point number two, decide whether to itemize your deductions or not. What receipts to gather will depend on whether you choose to itemize your deductions or take the standard deduction. You'll obviously want to go with the one that gives you the greater benefit. And the only way to know that is to add up your itemized deductions and compare them with the standard deduction. For 2020 year, the standard deduction amount for single filers is $12,400. If you're married filing jointly, it's $24,800. And if you're filing as a head of household, it's $18,650. You'll need receipts for every itemized deduction if you choose to go that route. I'm not going to list every available deduction, but the more popular ones are these. Educational expenses. Students can claim a deduction for tuition and fees they paid, as well as for interest paid on a student loan. The IRS won't accept your deduction claim without Form 1098-T, which shows your education transactions. Medical bills. Medical costs could provide tax savings, but only if they total more than 7.5% of adjusted gross income for most taxpayers. Property taxes and mortgage interest if your mortgage payment includes an amount escrowed for property taxes, that will be included on your Form 1098 your lender sends you. That document will also show how much home loan interest you can claim on your Schedule A. Charitable donations. Make sure you have receipts for all of your donations as the IRS could disallow them without verifying the gifts. Classroom expenses. For those of you who are teachers or other eligible educators, you can actually deduct up to $250 spent on classroom supplies. State and local taxes. You can deduct various other taxes such as sales taxes and up to $10,000 in property taxes. With regards to sales tax, the IRS provides a table with the average amounts you can claim, so you don't need individual sales tax receipts, but do keep the receipts for any large or major purchases. Point number three, do you use a professional or do it yourself? Depending on how co complicated your return will be, 
may determine whether or not you use a certified public accountant. Tax software is getting better and better every year, so you may be just fine doing it yourself. You actually might find that it's easier to file than you realize, especially if you follow our first point about gathering your relevant documents. Although we don't have a view on which software is the best, you might find the link in the description below useful in providing a comparison of which tax software to use. If you want to hire a CPA and don't know where to begin, reach out to us here at YCG and we can help you with that process. Point number four, make a deductible health savings or HSA contribution. If you had a qualifying high deductible health insurance coverage plan last year, you can make a deductible HSA contribution of up to $3,550 for self-only coverage or up to $7,100 for family coverage. This is an underutilized program, especially among the small business community. You can receive a huge benefit from contributing to an HSA, especially if you save and invest these funds. Point number five, make a deductible IRA contribution for 2020. Okay, this final point could lower your tax bill due this April, even though 2020 is over. If you've not yet made a deductible traditional IRA contribution for your 2020 tax year, you can do so between now and April 15 and claim the resulting write-off on your 2020 return, assuming you qualify. At YCG, we can help you set up a traditional IRA and invest your contribution. So reach out to us and start your planning for your retirement right now. You can potentially make a deductible contribution up to $6,000 or up to $7,000 if you were age 50 or older as of December 31st, 2019. The same goes for your spouse if you're married. There's a catch though, as you must have had enough 2020 earned income to equal or exceed your IRA contributions for the 2020 tax year. If you're married, either you or your spouse or both can have the necessary earned income. The other catch with deductible IRA contributions are that they're phased out or even eliminated if last year's income was too high and you and or your spouse participated in a tax favored retirement plan last year. Hopefully at least one of these tips is helpful to you. Remember, if you're pressed for time, you can always extend your return to October 15th by filing IRS form 4868. But also remember that if you owe any taxes for 2020, you will still need to pay those taxes by April 15th. Thanks for the great question today. Leave your comments below and check out our other videos. We'll see you next time.